praise your name when times of need carry on. I will praise your name, I will praise your name, though darkness falls all around. I will praise your name, I will praise your name if I. Jesus Christ shine forth. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us. Welcome to another live stream with DCCI Ministries. And there is the best advice, one of the best advice of the day after like falling in love with Lord Jesus Christ and enjoying his grace. Here is another good advice for all you to practice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying much about it. It's it speaks by itself. Um, I hope everyone is well. Um, on the line, I do have daughter of Christ, where we will be going through 
some of the comments um, she picked up from YouTube uh, from you. And we will be going through some of those comments. Some of them are, I think, funny. It has to be funny because I titled the video as the comedy. <laughs> and some of uh, them should be serious and upsetting. Therefore, I titled the video tragedy, comedy and tragedy. So we will see. We will see what she has for us on the store. Peace of Christ be with you, sister. And with you, sister. Um, yes, I'm excited about today. I like comedy. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I Taking screenshots of comments is my favorite thing to do. I do it for my entertainment. I don't know like so. how you find that's entertaining. I get I it. love it. Yeah, most of comments can cause me to stumble. So I'm just like, just, I read it and move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you learn a lot from these comments sometimes. You know, how Muslims think and our brothers and sisters have also in the Lord have a great sense of humor. So. Yeah, I think if you need any reference, go to channel's comment page and go to Phil's comments. He's got all the references you need. <laughs> Bless him. Like, just he puts lots of comments with the references. That is very, very helpful to everyone. So thank you very much for doing that, Bill. Um, Daughter of Christ. Yes, sister. I don't know what it is with you, but it seems people do like you. They did... I did receive a couple of emails last night that apparently I made your face to turn red versus <laughs> I was shameless. Uh, yes, my face was turning red all last night and I was sweating. I was so embarrassed. But it wasn't you, sister. It was um, the Islamic sources. It was the hadiths. The Sahih hadiths talking about breastfeeding for adults. Thank you for your concern, people who <laughs> write to sister. Thank you. But you weren't you embarrassed too, sister? Or what about you? No, I like one. There was someone, one of the beloved emailed in to say like, um, daughter, we can feel daughter of Christ's face turn red, versus <laughs> yeah. your face was shameless. <laughs> hey, so that's don't that attack my sister. Like, oh, I I didn't take that. Uh, uh, I didn't take it as attacked, but. Um, I just thought, oh, that's a bit interesting observation. But I am grateful, sister, that you didn't didn't use the plastic um, prop that you had for the session. Um, we will, sister. We will when oh, the no. time comes. <laughs> when the time comes. Um, anything which helps us to preach Christ crucified and challenge the teachings of Islam, I am open to those things. So. As people noticed, I have got shameless face. No, it's that's not just, shameless. It's just like, it was hard. It's brave. Me. It's brave because not a lot of, I think it's, I'm not sure it's the UK sort of sensibility because you're in the UK sister and most people will be like, oh, this is inappropriate. But if that's the case, then Islam has no place in the UK then because it is inappropriate. Um, oh, well. Whatever it is, it is um, causing people to think and give up Islam. Yeah. Therefore, it is helpful for us. But what we've decided to do for tonight is, since we are causing people, we are hurting the feelings of the mainly protected people and apparently causing some of the beloved ones to uh, stumble, um, we just thought tonight we do a little bit different and comedy and tragedy at the same time go through some of the comments people left and people left in the chat um, and just talk through them and see I don't know what are the comments so dot of Christ knows them I just downloaded them I will be the first time seeing them and we will take from there also if you want my attention in the chat you can write at DCCI or at daughter of Christ yes. and uh, I look out anyway because I love the comments and I'll pick yours up if we have time in the end yeah we'll see we've got 25 comments to go through um as it's been said please please if you want to get our attention put at sign in front of the dcci ministries as well as um i'm kind of sensitive about i'm not that much sensitive but there are certain things i'm very much sensitive and one of them is people sharing personal details or asking personal questions and then 
everyone else starts discussing that personal question, um, I get sensitive about it. I don't want my personal details to be on social media as well as I don't want your personal details to be on the social media. So please, please, please be careful of that and let's not put anyone in danger um, intentionally or non-intentionally. As well as please keep your comments and questions if you do have one um, in the use the language of English for everyone else to understand. I know I will not understand, but most of people will understand. So use English for that. Um, are we ready to go, sister? I'm ready. Okay. Let's start with the first one. So first comment comes from a Muslim missionary. Islamic Jannah is a place of bliss. Nothing impure, nothing impure taught, taught is there. Mm -hmm. And he writes Allahu Akbar in Arabic afterwards. Well, he doesn't know Arabic, but anyway, he knows they have to write Allah Akbar. So, Islamic Jannah, thanks for, first of all, putting a description of um, distinction between Christian heaven and Islamic paradise, Islamic Jannah. It's good to have that distinction. People will get it at the beginning. And everything is apparent. There is no sin sister do you agree <laughs> no impure thought that's what got me sister why sister like i think he's correct uh, islamic paradise is supposed to be the place where uh, muslims who make into paradise they are going to spend their eternity there therefore there shouldn't be anything considered as sin, such as having like more than one person to have sex in this occasion. It's 72. Having this beautiful woman with their like front passengers and non bleeding boats <laughs> and wines and slaves, um, all those things. So they are not sin, I guess. Yeah, I mean. Um... I don't know how he, he, if you have no impure thoughts, you can't enjoy the Islamic Jannah because everything in it is impure from beginning to end. Uh, you need you need someone with a brothel type mindset to enjoy Jannah. So I don't know how you put the two together. But this is the comedy slash tragedy of Muslim thinking, especially Muslim missionaries who are in denial. So I thought that was funny, sister. Um, just a, a warning. And unfortunately, it's that Muslim missionary who stalks the chat a lot. So it's quite a few comments that I picked up from him. It was just because of the volume of comments he puts on our chats. Um, sister, what is your problem with Islamic Jannah? Islamic paradise? Uh, if you have any problem, you might not have any problem. Yeah. Uh, no, I have a problem. Is that it's, uh, like I said, it's like a brothel. If it existed on Earth today, the police will shut it down. It's people having multiple sexual partners. Um, it talks about every few seconds there's a different woman. Um, people going around drinking uh, alcohol, uh, uh, having different women, having even young boys are not safe. Um, talking about eternal... Slaves. Yeah. Um, talking about... I can't even say. <laughs> um, let's just say the, the power of men to like keep having sex all over, over and over and over again in minute detail. If you read the hadith and the and the the sunnah, it talks about these things in minute details. Yeah, so they it's will like, have private parts which never. Like, yeah, that, that's yeah, what that, I mean. Yeah. Um, we did lots of sessions on Islamic paradise. Please do check them out you will see actually how disturbing it is. And it becomes very much sad that Muslim missionary thinks, yeah, it is awesome place to go. I find that's a bit double heartbreaking, but... And he says Allahu Akbar at the end. Yeah, like Allah, poor Allah, poor Allah. Come on, man. So, 
Alice Kaling asks, can you dive into tafsir, biographical works, and other Islamic literary works? I have been indulged, and it's so funny. Um, yes, we did actually lots of we did lots of sessions on biography of Muhammad, and then we did look at the tafsirs as well. Um, depend which topic you are looking, because we look at when we pick up a topic, we look at almost all of the Islamic sources. So, but thank you for bringing to our attention. Um, beside it is funny, it is strangely disturbing because many people are simply following those things and making their way into hell. Hell, hell, hell. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything needs my attention so far, sister? Uh, so far, so good, sister. Just commenting on the, on the comment that we just put up, so... Okay, so is there anyone in the chat thinks Islamic paradise is just like more than perfect? Nope. <laughs> no. No yep. one. Yeah, good. So getting drunk in like overall Islamic paradise is the things are forbidden in this world that halal in, in Islamic paradise. I'll call eternal slaves. You will have slaves for all eternity. Young boys, virgins with lots of descriptions, all those kind of things. But I think most sad thing on that is Allah is not going to dwell among his people. That is the saddest part of Islamic um, Islamic paradise. Let me move to second comment. It is titled as someone is asking for advice. Daughter of Christ, what is this? So this person is asking for advice regarding the best way to approach a Muslim friend. Like he wants the best things to bring to their attention about Islam so they could leave it. So that, that, that's, that uh, question is asked a lot of, many times in different ways, so I thought I'd bring it. Okay. Um, what do you think? Um, it depends what's keeping them in Islam. So it helps to... Uh, know what is keeping them in Islam. For example, uh, if it's a convert, it happens to be, um, we see a lot of converts from the black community, they convert to Islam, for example, because they think it's, it gives black people rights or, um, you know, uh, we can you can bring them parts of Islam that are racist or that Muhammad said that were racist. Some people are in it because of blind loyalty. Some people are in it because of complete ignorance that they don't know. But once they know uh, certain things, um, then they leave it. So the best thing to do is ask your friend what's keeping you in Islam and then attack that part. Because if you, Islam is so vast, it's got so many horrible things, uh, you'll be there all night and not everyone leaves for the same reason. So you need to know what's the reason that's keeping them and zone in on that reason and then attack it. That's what I think. What do you think, sister? But um, I think in this occasion, individual um, expresses that, like all the things person tried, a Muslim is simply saying like, oh, well, I want to stay as a Muslim. Then you just pray. Um, some, you know, I think David Wood touched on it before. He asked the question, if Islam is not true, do you want to know? Some people don't want to know. Some people say whether it's true or not, I'll stay. And for that, for those people, there's nothing you can do. But there are a lot of people who have integrity. And, and they say, well, if that's true about Islam, then I'm leaving it. So if you're with a person like that, you have more hope. But a lot of Muslims, they stay in Islam because of loyalty, family. No matter what you say or do, they're tied to it. Or even because of fear, they're not brave enough to face the consequence. So no matter what you say, they'll stay in it. And you just need to pray. What do you think? So? Um, every individual is unique uh, because our God is unique and that's like awesome. Therefore, there is no formula for what arguments works with whom. There is no formula for that. Every individual deserves different attention. Every individual deserves different um, statements uh, or different facts in Islam, from Islam. Uh, I don't think I am the best person to ed give any advice on this because um, I get um, lots of critique regarding the 
approach I follow, even though I know like oh, nearly, nearly 1,500 converts, <laughs> but still people um, not happy with my approach. But at this stage, person already made from the comment I am reading, person already made her or his decision that he, he wants to stay as a Muslim. He wants to die as a Muslim. I am guessing at this stage, he already heard about Muhammad's life. He already heard about the problems in the Quran. And then he already heard about the eternity Allah is offering. That And he still wants to stay and die as a Muslim. That is like very much sad. But I'm guessing by this stage that has been done. Therefore, for you to produce any original sources is not going to change his mind. It is at this stage, I, I, I'm kind of hoping and I am kind of believing that you are already on your knees and praying for the um, praying for the soul of this individual because end of the day it is not our work to convert anyone our work is give the message God does his part we do we do our part um, sorry Okay. Sorry, sister. Um, I'm sending you messages as we speak because I'm picking things up from chat. So yes. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah. So um, if 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 it was me, by the stage person already kind of said, oh well, all the conversations we had, still I want to be Muslim. As I said, first points like I did ask the after I critic Islam after I preach our glorious gospel because you don't want people to become a Christian because they don't like Islam you want people to become a Christian because they are falling in love with our God they are falling in love with our delightful gospel with our glorious gospel and our glorious God so breaking the barriers I don't see there is any problem to just the person say actually your prophet had a sex with a child and then give all the details. Would you do so? Your prophet ordered to suck the breast of strangers. Would you do so? Oh, how would you feel if your father expresses that he wants to marry with your wife? Like bringing the questions to the personal level on Muhammad and from the teachings of the Quran. Because at, at the end, it will be the emotions are going to help the person to make decisions. So you, you question their emotions and then you take it from there. Oh, how would you feel when you, when, how, how do you feel knowing that your father can beat your mom? How do you feel that you can, someone can come and have sex with your mom in front of you? bringing all those disturbing questions into the personal level. And if the still person wants to become, stay as a Muslim, uh, that's absolutely fine. Just pick up. Uh, one of the things I do is I do lots of, I can't verbalize that. Anyway, it's, uh, it's, um, <sighs> One of the things I am intentional when I am engaging with Muslims is when they tell me they heard everything, they love the conversation, all that junk, but they don't want to become a Christian, one of the things I, I do ask them, please put forward five reasoning I brought towards you that Islam is false religion, Muhammad is false prophet, Quran is false book, and give me your Give me your understanding of the gospel message I am preaching you. Once person tells me gospel is eternal son of the God's soul of the world gave his one and only son and one and only son gave himself on the cross for us and raised on the third day. And because of his death and his resurrection, 
I am declared righteous. I can stand in front of Holy God and I can spend eternity with my triune God. Once he kind of gives me the kind of summary of the gospel and then says, yeah, I don't want it. Person understands the gospel and they don't want it. I can't do much about it. All I can do is on my knees pray for that person day after day. But if they didn't understand the gospel, then I need to make sure they understood the gospel as well as I was critiquing Islam. They, un they need to understand that gospel so that they can say they don't want it. If they haven't understand, I need to work on my communication skills and then make sure they do understand the gospel and they don't want it. That's the kind of, for me, po points like if the person says, I understand the gospel and they tell me what is the gospel and they don't want it, I, I leave them alone. Uh, but until that stage, I'll kind of push as much as I can. Um, I don't think buying original sources and giving the person original sources is going to help because I believe by this stage, every conversation you had with the person, you simply look at the verses and from the, its sources, like person is your neighbor, neighbor, you turn to your neighbor and then you say, you can do this like with a couple of times, like a couple of ways. Oh, when was the last time you beat your wife? That can be one of the way. Or other way, if you kind of more want to be lovely version of yourself, then you can say, oh, um, I've got Quran I'm trying to read to understand what it is all about. I come across with a verse which seem to tell me that husband can beat the wife. Are you able to read this and then tell me actually what it says? Because what you think is important to me as you are my Muslim neighbor. And then you make sure person reads in front of you and then tries to do her or his best to explain that verse to you, what Islam teaches. And then if person says, oh, I don't know, you can say, I'm really, if this is how I am reading, my reading version is correct. I find this very much disturbing. Do you mind like checking with your Muslim scholars because it is important, the application of this is even important. And then get that person to do homework and then chase that topic up. That's like one of the way. Or you can like start with the, oh, tell me, are you good Muslim? How many times do you beat your wife? All those kind of things like you can just Take it how you want, but depend how you want to go from from that. It's always like people find helpful, especially if people are more focused on relationships. People find more helpful. You will find more helpful to say, oh, would you mind explaining this to me? I am concerned on this. Or like any other verse you read, you say, oh, I just come across with this one. It doesn't look very good. Like, have you got any input you can share with me? Can you enlighten me what it says? Those things might be helpful. Um, but I believe by this stage, you already had those conversations. Giving that person original sources is not going to help the person. That's what I believe. But one of the other practical thing might be just uh, befriend me on Skype or, or drop me email and give me more details of what you so far discussed and then if I do have any experiences from my life or the ministry I am involved I, we can discuss and talk through those things uh, shall I move to the next one sister or did you want to make uh, yeah people who are against the approach of my sister Oh. Um, uh, you can disagree, but um, from my point of view as an ex-Muslim, uh, it's been too long that uh, us Christians and generally people in general have been silent and polite about Islam. And most importantly, it doesn't help the souls of Muslims if you're polite and you tiptoe around the subject, you, uh, you know, you beat around the bush because you want to be polite because time is running out and every day Muslims are dying and going to hell. And this is very, very serious. 
So uh, my sister's approach I like because it grabs the attention. And over time, because it's so um, in your face sometimes, Muslims can't ignore it. And I said this before, Muslims are used to things being hammered into them from childhood. So you need a strong enough approach on the other side to counteract that um uh, you, you know that that harshness that they have against the gospel you have to be harsh enough but with love and truth to counteract that kind of darkness and it's different approaches for different people so and it is actually effective uh, uh, so it's helpful to remember people are different people are unique and yes. that is good thing and our end goal is we want them to we don't want them to go to hell because God doesn't want them to go to hell. Because of that is important. Like before people start loving me, having friends, building friendship with me, I want them to build friendship with Lord Jesus Christ. Not me, I'm just nobody. But I want Lord Jesus Christ to get their attention. Therefore, I'm not that much focused on friendship, but I do have lots of lots of Muslim friends. Um, it's not about, like, it doesn't come naturally, you know? I, don't, I disagree, sister. I think you're very friendly. <laughs> of course just, you are going to say a different, that. Just a different flavor of friend, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, it's, like, more important people become friend with Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, not friend with me. For me, it is more important that people walk through the bridge Lord Jesus Christ built for them instead of me to build bridges with people. For me, it is important that before individuals die, they know they are forgiven by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. That is important. So, prayfully consider however Lord leads you. But uh, other practical thing is a very, very important all our engagements we cannot compromise gospel i'm sure you are already kind of in that line but in all of our engagements we need to make sure we source what we are saying we source what we are saying not uh, oh i think i heard this from someone here it is it is in your resources can you be kind enough and explain it to me? That's all you are asking. Different ways, but like overall, that's all you are ask asking. Um, let me move to the comment three. Sister, what is this yeah. about? Just for I'm waiting for it to come on screen. So it's oh, you don't see that one. Okay. Um, I always wonder what that meant. How do a man strike woman lightly? And what is lightly? For me, lightly might be very hard on the person I strike. So this is, I think, conversation is about Surah 4 verse 34 where we get to see um, Muslims are kind of putting in the parentheses strike them lightly, beat them lightly. Um, so question is like, how do you beat someone lightly? Definition of lightly changes from one person to other person. I think the arg like kind of way of thinking is if someone is pretty big, those like rugby players, for example, they are very, very big people. <laughs> their body is like big they are they can like easily probably handle like 50 kilogram and then their lightly is not that lightly at all if they are punching like something versus that changes from someone else to other person what do you think sister yeah i think the person is very logical lightly is a relative thing if um a, wor a world-class boxer beats me lightly i'll be dead let me just tell you this, <laughs> I'm a small person. So, um, and what? remember this verse is talking to the men, not the women. He's saying to the men, beat them lightly. So it's lightly from the perspective of a man. A man might think he's beating you lightly and you have bruises and he thinks, well, that's light to me. I won't do that to a man. So. <laughs> yeah, hus um, husband could say like, 
okay my understanding of beating someone lightly is only breaking their arms legs and couple of uh, ribs not their yeah. head that might depend like, yeah it depends how brute they are uh, like at the seventh century they were going around beating with the sword slic slicing people around with the sword so lightly to them would be that you're not dead or, I can, I or imagine. in the time of Muhammad beating lightly was causing women to have green skin which is greener than her dress so putting someone into bruises is uh, can be understood as lightly but the bottom line is there is not such a thing called like beating lightly. It simply says beat them. Mm, so even the lightly doesn't work. But the lightly is added anyway, like you said, sister. So yeah, good question to the Muslims. And yeah, we do. I, I, I did notice there is a Muslim in the chat. I'm sure he will explain like you beat them with the handkerchief. Is the handkerchief. You just like beat them, you know, I was actually, someone sent me a video on this. I haven't watched all of it. It's like long four minutes video. I know four minutes is not that long, but sometimes that can be long. Okay. In that video, um, in one country, people have a little bit bigger uh, handkerchief and they are like um, trying to beat the, uh, hit, beat the um, flies so that like flies can leave the room. It, maybe it's something like that. It it wasn't working on flies, but you never know. <laughs> so your wife is like an annoying fly. You you, you keep yeah. waving the handkerchief at her to get rid of her. <laughs> yeah, and then remember, there was another comment, not another comment, sorry, on one of the translation which was put together in the Quran dot com. It has been translated as beat them symbolically. Mm, yeah, because That's symbolic. Another way. Symbolic beating is so effective for a woman. And remember, it's that translation. The woman was so, had a temper problem, anger problem. So symbolic beating would be, work perfectly for us. Yeah, well, wonderful. It's just wonderful. But <laughs> those, are, those are good questions for you to ask Muslims. Oh, what, what do you mean, like, beating someone lightly? Even, like, why at the first stage you are beating that person? In, in UK, mm -hmm. like, if you like scream at your dog people call animal rescue service you know that so you're trying to say that it's treating the wife worse than a dog yep i'm not trying to say that islam is trying to teach that okay okay mm. okay he's got we've got the great ah uh, is there someone explain to us what it means it is love touch Love touch? Yeah. Yeah, that would be a better translation. Yeah, yes. So, so someone is, I, I believe this is beloved. A Christian says, no, you got it wrong, sisters. Beating lightly actually means a love touch. Yeah. He, he meant to hug, really. Yeah. I remember, <laughs> like, um, one of the Muslim missionary at Speaker's Corner was saying, like, oh, once he was explaining how Muhammad struck Aisha on the chest, which caused Aisha pain. He was trying to justify that when you are giving a hug to your wife, your wife says, oh, you just hurt my bones. Um, so in that sense, he was trying to use that. Great. Um, okay, let me move to the next comment. We are only in number four now. Good comments. Good comments, guys. Okay. Number four. Someone wants to educate someone. I love when Muslim says, let me educate you. <laughs> when Muslims say, let me educate you, it means there's rubbish coming out afterwards, <laughs> usually. That means, like, I'm sorry, Allah didn't do a good job, but I can do better than Allah. Give me opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Do, do you want to read this sister let me educate you since no one is above Allah so his prayer comes back to him it's that simple get it oh this is about the Allah praise yeah hmm. so now we come to the conclusion that when Muslims are trying to educate someone 
Apparently, in this occasion, Muslim is trying to educate an ex-Muslim mm -hmm. by confirming Allah as a monarch God. He, by himself, is praying. Remember? It was mm -hmm. like Allah is prayer praying for. In this yeah. occasion, Allah is praying to himself. His prayers come back to him. Mm. Why do you need prayer like in that? So, uh, it's Muslim... so simple, sister. Did you get it? No, because we're half brains. I still don't get it. Uh, first of all, the Muslim Muslims here, your fellow Muslim brother is confirming Allah prays. Yeah. Number one. Not praise. Pray. Praise. P R A Y. Yeah. And uh, let me educate. Let me educate you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Remember, after let me educate you, after what comes after it makes no sense normally. And this is a proof. Allah is sitting there talking to himself, sister, like uh, someone in a mental asylum. Because no one, since no one is above him, his prayer goes round and round and round. Can't find anyone above him. Oh, what do I do? Let me come back to him. So why did he pray in the first place? Yeah, so it could be one of the occasions, you know, uh, sometimes when you see people are talking to themselves, you think mm -hmm. best way to move on from here is call 999 and then say, <laughs> okay, do you have like anyone close from mental health institution can come and take this person in because... He's been talking to himself for a long time now, and that doesn't look very good at all. So one of the things, that's what you can do. Or other thing is talking to uh, yourself. It's like you look at the mirror and then you tell yourself, ah, oh, Muhammad messed up, Muhammad messed up, let me forgive Muhammad. Muhammad messed up, Muhammad messed up, let me forgive Muhammad. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been on a bus sister in the in the uk there's usually some poor soul at the back of the bus sitting there rocking back and forth usually drunk talking to himself come on do you think allah is a young boy with the curly hair with the <laughs> beard not mustache no mustache with not beard is drunk do you think he got drunk from the, those river of the wines in paradise? He was like learning how to do swimming as a young boy. He wants to improve his like arm muscles, leg, um, leg muscles, and then become like with six pack. Yeah, he's drunk and usually on another substance as well, high. From, and everyone, from... in, everyone in that bus is usually trying to not to sit next to him or moving away from him because they know he's deranged or has a mental health issue. Now it all makes sense. <laughs> okay, here's, here's, the, here's my theory, okay? Yeah. So, Allah is a young boy, okay? Remember, the reason Allah doesn't have a son because he doesn't have a girlfriend. It might be, it might be, because he's so drunk from just swimming in that river in paradise <laughs> full of wine. As he swims, I don't swim, I can't swim, but like, I'm guessing like when you swim, like water, you sometimes you will swallow in the water. And then he kind of just drinks this wine on the, as he swims in the wine river. And he forget to shave his leg, his shin. And mm. now he's like half drunk with the curly hair, green dress. He doesn't have a girlfriend. And all he does is he talks to himself and then his prayer comes back to himself as he prays for Muhammad, as he prays for believers. Why? Because he doesn't know any better. No wonder he doesn't have a girlfriend, sister. He's no. a nutcase. Drunk. No, no woman Drunk. wants to be with someone who has mental disorders talking to himself. And in this occasion, he's drunk, like, because he just been to that river. Um, so thank you very much for confirming that Allah does pray. And thank you very much for confirming that Allah is talking to himself. Allah is trying to kind of convince himself. Um, in certain occasions, probably Allah is just changing the um, kadar, uh, changing the predestination of the people or changing his mind. And Allah needs to convince himself. Or maybe Allah is playing like, 
to be his lawyer, his own lawyer, and then make his case and then move on? I don't know. It all looks very dodgy to me. Me too, sister. And he's sitting there rocking back and forth, talking to himself. Praise like be this. to Muhammad, praise be Muhammad, praise be to Muhammad. Come on, all my angels, join in. Let's <laughs> let's do this together, angels. Don't leave me alone. <laughs> Muhammad, 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 Muhammad. Yeah, that sounds like... Yeah, we know who's more important, the most important person in the universe. Yep, yep. Yeah, Muhammad, not Allah. Uh, dodgy, this is dodgy. Let me move to the next one. Anything needs my attention from the chat. Let's move to the number five. But in case, oh yeah, there was someone made a comment that um, uh, I'm just translating um, the way it will make more sense. Of course, it doesn't mean like your comment wasn't very good, but comment was in the sense of Allah is allowing the husband to beat the wife in the intention that wife will learn self-defense. Mm. Good. Yeah, Allah could do that differently. Why, if Allah gets rid of the beating at the first place, first place, no one needs to learn self-defense. But uh, thank you, Jesus says, I don't talk to myself. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> and that's Allah, guys. Yep, that's fine. Okay, number five. I think this is like a bit sad. Someone, Abbas caused someone to leave Islam. Yeah, thank you. Thank That's you. Sad, Abbas. One of your brothers left because of you. <laughs> uh, in in a way, it's not because of him. It's because of Islam. Allah and uh, unfortunately, Allah misguided the person and then used Abbas to misguide him. Yeah, Abbas, you should blame Allah for that because Allah predestined in His qadr that He will misguide that guy through you. And yep. you were trying to defend his religion, and yep. Allah predestined that you make him lose lose his faith. How do you feel, Abed? Mm. Uh, by the way, um, yes, Islam is so bankrupt that I have nothing against Uber drivers or pizza drivers, but there's no one else to stand up and defend except normal people who have normal jobs. Where are the sheikhs and the imams to come to defend Islam and not leave it to one person who's making people leave Islam? What do you think? Um, where are the sheikhs, the Muslim missionaries, and the scholars? Probably, probably, they are just having falafel, and then alongside of the falafel, camel urine, and then practicing, preparing their uh, stomach for the fish liver. I have to say I'm jealous because people have left Islam because of our best, and I haven't seen a comment saying I've left Islam because of daughter of Christ, so please pray for me that I be as fruitful as Abbas in making people leave Islam, guys. Um, you don't want people to leave Islam as a Christian, you want people to become a Christian after they leave Islam. And yes. it is it is good that people don't put such a comments because that will make our hearts in a wrong way, sister. Okay. We don't okay. want we don't want such a comment. We want people to give up their ideologies and become lover of Lord Jesus Christ because of Lord Jesus Christ. If people are saying, oh, yeah, thanks to the daughter of Christ that I become a Christian, I left Islam, mm. that won't be... Good. That would make me happy. But it won't be good for my... It won't be good for your soul. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, pray that it happens then and God knows about it, but then I don't know about it. That will be good. Mm. Next, uh, next one. Yeah. Number six. Okay, number six. Muslims are asking me why I changed my religion. I say, is Jesus alive? They say, yes. I say, is Muhammad dead? They say, yes. So, why shall I, why shall I follow a dead person, the dead man? Wake up, Muslim brothers and sisters. 
learn your religion and I think he he kind of will go on and then say once you learn your religion you will give Islam up yeah uh, this gentleman I've uh, watched him in the last sort of couple of weeks in the chat he's I think he's a new brother in Christ from Muslim background he's he's from where you are sister I think um God bless you, you brother. You Welcome mean like homeless? Lefkowski. He's from, he's Turkish, yes. Yes, he's Turkish and now he's in the kingdom of God. God bless you, brother. Please pray for him that he grows in the faith and the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, yes, Mohammed is dead. Yes. And I, I don't want to say poor guy, but like not only he's dead, he's making, he made his way to hell. And he's helping many others to make their way to hell. Versus Lord Jesus Christ not only gave himself for humanity and died on the cross by crucifixion. He came back to life from dead. And he's alive and seated at the right hand of the father. From Christian perspective. From Islamic per perspective. Islamic Jesus is... Allah couldn't kill Jesus. But Allah was willing to kill Muhammad. Allah took Jesus up to himself. Not to paradise, but up to himself. And Jesus is with Allah. Jesus is alive, Islamic Jesus, and with Allah. He is with the creator of universe according to Muslims versus Muhammad is like probably freaked out from the engine of the death and just being barbecue in hell I don't know Amen know. we got brother Nur al-Masih he's saying in Arabic that Muhammad he died rotting Paul, I, like Aisha says, he never seen anyone suffered as much as, much as Muhammad. Because remember, this food he ate caused him to suffer for whole three years. Not even like one day. Whole three years to fulfill the prophecy of the Quran. And then finally Allah got rid of him. We got a question, sister. Do you want me to ask now or wait till the end? Uh, yeah, you can ask now, sister. Uh, JXS says DC Ministries does wearing a diaper save you from the punishment in the grave? I think he means, you know, the Muhammad said because of the urine. If you don't purify from the urine, you have torture in the grave. But if you wear a nappy, you'll still, you'll still not be purified from it. It's still like not clean. What do you think, sister? So, um, <laughs> jihad is, I'm thinking loud because I didn't get this question before. This in this practical sense of it. So, wearing, um, so, sorry, when jihad is, before they like decide that they are gonna scream Allah Akbar and then take the life of individuals. They put something on their private part because they don't want their private part to get destroyed if they are doing bombing or something. Because it will kind of affect them, affect their capability once they get the Islamic paradise. I don't think that needs too much explanation. I hope it makes sense. And um in somehow that doesn't work because once they have been put on the grave they are like um what is that white cloth you cover someone when, when the, shroud, put, the shroud yeah so when you put some like you wash people and then before you put them on grave they are full naked so practically it is difficult for anyone to get into the grave with diaper and practically it is difficult for any human beings 
to live their life by wearing diaper so that they will be saved from the grave punishment because if they pee in a wrong way to wrong places then Allah is not going to be nice to them that's like by itself it is not practical therefore I would simply say no it won't save people from the grave punishment okay JXS I hope that answers your question yeah and other thing is like helpful for us to think through without Lord Jesus Christ whatever they do whatever practical things they want to live their life so that okay they pee correctly they do certain things correctly so that they they pass through the punishments according to our scripture it's not going to be like that that is eternal punishment is waiting for those who rejects Jesus to be the son of God so diaper is not going to save anyone like th thinking th learning how to answer the basic questions angel is going to ask you on the on the grave memorizing them reciting them day after day and hoping that when Allah ask you when angel ask you those questions it will come to your mind it's not going to help you walking through that tin walking through the tin things so that you practice walking through the bridge of sirat that's not going to help you at all it is only by the blood of lord jesus christ you will make yourself actually it's not even you lord jesus christ will put you in the place you've got to be that's what i think but um we could ask we could ask muslims to practice and then once we are in front of the lamb of god on the day of judgment we could simply ask muslims oh if they practice work or not Krisana T. Mom says, I was going to sneak a diaper in the grave. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe you can put it in your will. Make sure there's a diaper in my grave. No, but like, practically, they are not going to bury you with that. If you put it in your will, no, please no. bury me with that. Then they no, will, right? No, no. So um, I, I arranged like my funeral things, all those kind of things. And then I had to go through all the practical side of the burial things or and other practical side of it no so you are you can't like i know in the uh in the past um let's say like three two thousand bc or something in the past even in british museum we've got the uh we've got the physical evidence people would take some essential things with them so that once they die they can use those things um, yes, people were being buried with such a things, but not not today. You are going to grave naked by yourself. You can't even take your loved ones with you. Let alone you can't even take like I don't know your wedding ring or something. Mm. Yeah, even if you put it on your grave, if you put uh, sorry will, even if you write on your will, okay, I'm gonna take all my money with me, bury my money with me. No. <laughs> You. you can't even take like your favorite picture uh, it's a scary thing sister if you don't have the lord jesus yeah like in, in instead of like taking the diaper i think you need to be more practical and you need to take something which once angel is like about to beat <laughs> you like you, you should i don't know take like uh a shield no no some chemical things like just throw on the angel and then angel gets like Put a helmet. Make sure they have a put a helmet on you, so when the angel hits you with a hammer, you don't feel it. No, no. Like there are some chemicals um, you pour on the things, and then those things becomes whole or uh, like burns them. Um, or you've got chemicals simply like causes damages on the body, ho makes holes. Those kind of things. Just take oh. some chemical instead of like taking diaper. That makes sense. Yeah. Or just like take bleach. Even like bleach is very <laughs> dangerous. Or take coke. No, no, take garlic because angels don't like garlic. Yeah, you could, garlic, yeah, garlic, garlic and, and coke. 
and then eat garlic, <laughs> eat garlic, eat garlic. And with the cock, once I read it in um, one of the um, kind of news, there was a news, one of the guy um, fall into a uh, thing which was containing cock and then he got melted. Just take cock with the garlic, eat the garlic first, if garlic doesn't work, then just throw the cock on them, it will burn them. You don't need diaper. Good, good, good thoughts, sister. Good plans, yes. Or easiest way, just give it up. Just give that ideology up. And you don't need to plan those kind of things. Okay, let okay. me move to the next one. Let, let's move to the next comment. Uh, number seven. Where are you, number seven? Um, would you like to read number seven, sister? Um, is that the uh, the brother Umut again? Yeah. Uh, Umut. you sister? can also say Shahada. Put your burqa on, and then find someone. Then I will join, and we'll do halal nikah. <laughs> then we both earn the money together and share fifty fifty. <laughs> what do you think? So he's trying to. Uh, I see these deals in the chat, sister. They're quite funny. Um. So here is trying to do a fake halal marriage because there's a lot of money in it and then split split it 50-50. What do you think? I'm, I am very much aware that halal husbands uh, are making lots of money. <laughs> so um, those of you who doesn't know what is halal nikah is halal nikah is um, when a husband divorced the wife and then decides after three divorce, um, husband wants to take her back. Uh, he can't just take the falafel and baklava and chocolate and flowers and then say, oh, Habibi, please come back. He can't do that. She needs to go and have sex with someone else. And that someone else needs to divorce her um, then, or dump her. And after that, she can go back to first husband. So that's called halala marriage. In UK, it is very much practiced. And then you've got individuals who, whose job is identified as halala husband. So it all go, comes from Surah to 213. And in UK, um, you've got even Facebook pages just especially work on those things. But... Um, halala husband makes lots of lots of money because they are charging the woman for the sex that they are gonna have with the woman um, it's good business it's good business uh, morally it's so disturbing and disgusting but for the business side yes it is good business mm. clever clever but don't as, do it though. yeah as a Christian it has no place in our life uh, and we don't practice deceptions, deceptions. But I think it's probably giving other people ideas, sister. Money, money, money. <laughs> Not a bad idea. There's a loads of money in it. Um, yes. Um, the phrase used there is like um, taste her juice i didn't want to go through those things because people think i'm shameless <laughs> it's not your words these things, but... it's muhammad's words he <laughs> said those words <laughs> it's like oh can i get some orange juice anyway um i think let's go to point eight command eight. Oh, abbas is writing to sam shamun I thought we'll help him with the question. Give me one example that make Muhammad low level. <laughs> it's a bit like the Jannah comment, sister. Yeah. Where do we start? Yeah, so we don't have um, Brother Sam Shimon here, but I'm sure Daughter of Christ can give you more than one, of course. With that one, I am sure for um, Abbas, you've got to define what is low level, sister, because sometimes I think low level changes from one individual to other individual. 
uh, yeah, I uh, I checked uh, Brother Sam Shamoon's reply in the chat, and he said something like, "Well, how about um, raping married women uh, in battle?" And did um, Abbas thought that was low level, or no, Abbas thought that was okay? That's Surah well, four verse twenty four background of he, Surah four twenty four. He didn't answer. I'm thinking he didn't have any problem with it as being low level. Where do you start? Uh, climbing on top of a child, um, taking sex slaves in battle, um, calling black people raisin head, um, uh, uh, making Muslims beat their wives is, or allowing sister, them as an option. Sister, you asked only one. Why are you giving more than one? He won't be able to observe all those things. But continue. Well, <laughs> In case I, you I, think I, I yours you are not low level. Uh, telling men to rape, that they can rape their wives. Um, sort of, uh, say, saying, um, wh where was I? Oh, yes. Paying people to become Muslim. That's in Mu'allafa Qulubihim. Um, buying, selling, and owning slaves. Um, torturing people. For example, Kanana ibn Rabia. And then taking their wives. Um, killing people in horrific ways, like Umm Qirfa, he tied her to camels and they tore her apart. Um, being vicious in war, being a warlord, attacking people who are otherwise were peaceful, uh, annihilating races like the Jewish race from the Arabian Peninsula, um, planting hatred towards the Jews and Christians until today, lying about God himself, um, going against God's previous scriptures while pretending he's for them and confirming them, being illiterate and refusing to learn to read and write all his life, thereby, um, even though he said, Iqra, read in one of the verses, that's going against his own, um, not being fair to all his wives, which is like 13 at least, um, breaking his oath, uh, and uh, allowing Muslims to break their oaths, that's in Surah 66, verse 1. Um, I don't know, I forgot the question. I'll tell you what, sister. Tell us something that Muhammad did that wasn't low level. That would be a better question. Sorry, sister, you put in <laughs> comments as well. Yeah, some couple of people kind of made a point. I thought it was helpful. Um, yeah, I can see punching wife, Aisha. So, um, stealing underwear, splitting the moon. <laughs> so, yeah, I was gonna ask you on this. Um, if, um, you talked about torturing of Kinana and then mm -hmm. after that, marrying with um, his wife, not marrying actually, forcing himself to his wife, and then after that, like identifying person as wife. Um, why did he torture him? because he knew where the treasures of Banu Nadir is, where the treasures of his tribes were buried, and he because refused to tell the Muslims. Money? money, yeah. The treasure of his tribe was buried, and he wouldn't tell Muslims where it was, and they wanted to know. Because of money? That's just yes. really, really bad. Yeah. Really, really bad. You, told, mm. you, put, you put fire on the chest of a man. Why? Because man doesn't want to tell, give you his money and doesn't want to tell you where it is. Like, like that's like gangs. Yeah, as well. He was the mafia. If he if he lived today, he would be called the mafia, and there would be international effort to try and capture him no, and put him in prison. No, that would be Islamophobia, sister. They would allow him to get away. But if he was Mexican or for, from Colombia. <laughs> or from R Russia, then yeah, they would try to arrest him. <laughs> but because um, he would be still Muslim. What so about you, sister? Him. You have a list? Sorry? You have a list for him? Um, you, I think you did, you did verbalize all needed to be said. Um, um, marrying his daughter in law. Did, you, did yeah. you tell that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot that one. And then uh, abolishing um, adoption after like causing the uh, divorce oh uh, yeah i didn't i didn't yeah did I you talk about one. stealing the red underwear i forgot that one uh, did you talk about sucking the tongues of hussein no i didn't and uh, did you uh did you mention because you gave long list did you mention um blasting um after the girls who are in the cradle no 
Did you mention that sleeping with a dead person, that woman? Oh, your list is better, sis. No, so just... none of none of this is low level. This is all high level. Of course, that makes him mercy to mankind. Your greatest example. Did you mention um, torturing people and putting hot iron on their eyes after making them to drink camel urine and mm. chopping their hands and feet and then letting them in the Arabia desert to die? No, I didn't say that. And I think someone made the essential point as low level is still today causing people to go to hell. Oh, stone worship and kissing black stone. Thank you, JXS. Yeah. French kiss. Let's call that French kiss. It needs to be identified what kind of kiss that is. Um, above all, lying about Christian doctrine. Um, lying about God. Domestic slavery. Uh, sleeping with all his wives and only having one bath, someone says. Standard narrative. Yeah, mi missing the gusuls, like he wasn't doing gusul between sex. Yeah, which is very unhygienic. Probably You'd probably spread a disease if you do that. Be the outbreak monkey. Maybe that's why he never had a child from his wives. Yeah, because uh, if for people who don't know, some sexually transmitted infections can cause infertility. Just saying. Anyway... Uh, okay. Oh, of course, of course. He uh, he was um, born after four years after his death, his father's Oh, but death. that's not... That's, that's his mother's low level, not his low level. <laughs> Come on, sister. Therefore, like, that, because of that, he just, like, freaked out. Oh, he made naked woman to stand in front, um, in the presence of angels. Oh, yeah. And, oh, cross-dressing, Jake says, yes. I am wearing, a, yeah, lots of, lots of things. Bewitched. Yeah, bewitched. Um, um, yeah. Quartering old women. Yeah, he did. But for me, like, lying about my God, that is, like, lowest of all. The lowest thing is to pretend to be from God when you're not. And uh, obviously, the, all the souls of Muslims since his time to now, leading all of them to hell, that's the biggest one for me. Yeah, he didn't even know. Actually, I... Um, let me see if I have something in here. Um, <laughs> Someone could get... I don't know. Uh, saying, when, so when are you getting to his low-level stuff? <laughs> um, you know one of the bad things he did? He never um, assemb he, he never put together the Quran before he died properly, so that Muslims wouldn't be confused forever after. Yeah, but he couldn't read and write. Maybe he could have sup supervised the operation. Mm, you are as you've got too much hope in him, sister. He was very busy from wife to wife, from lasting after people. Satanic verses, yes, um, mermaid. Um, threatening to divorce his wives because they didn't like that he slept with the slave girl, pretending revelation from God to scare them and manipulate them into obedience. That's in Surah 66. Um, waging war on people who are not be uh, uh, believers and forcing them to pay the jizya with submission. Surah 929, which Muslims did do afterwards, historically, and so much suffering because of it in the world. Yeah, lying child about Jesus. Marriage, child marriage. There is yeah. nothing like, I don't know, if you push more and more and more, I don't know what will be the one, like, not law thing he didn't do. Dunking flies and drinks. <laughs> Oh, I, I can see the um, picture now that he poses. Yeah. Very nice. This is from Brother Mark. Uh, kind of summarize how low Muhammad was. Blind guides the blind. Very powerful. We will go through this like in different session, but I wanted to show you 
since I'm a very nice person. Okay, so uh, let me just continue with the um, next next one. What number are we? Okay, so we are in number. Uh, can't remember which number it is, but it's identified as. I think number nine. Sorry, picture okay. number nine. Messenger of Allah said, when one of you finish eating, I think that's like chicken or something over there, he should not wipe his fingers until he has licked them himself or has given them to someone else to lick for him. Hadith 21 KFC in Quran. <laughs> that's quite funny, sister, because KFC... You don't you don't eat junk food, sister, but I do. It's like finger licking good. That's their motto. So they actually tell you to lick it your fingers because the chicken is so delicious. So this is what Muhammad said. But it, so I, Muhammad was also saying like if you can't do it, like let someone else to lick your finger. Oh yeah, they don't they don't say have someone else lick it, lick your finger. They say you yourself should lick your finger. Okay. So he goes a bit further there. Okay, so that doesn't look so don't go to KFC. But it shows that you know, obviously, he was a man ahead of his time. Um, you mean like he was he's he was a true prophet, he knew in the future there will be a junk food shop store, yeah, where simply sell those chickens and then advertise the same way. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> people in the chat saying Quran. Uh, Quran fried chicken. That's quite funny. One of my friends actually tasted for KFC. Really? I'll make, sure I'll, bring, uh, I'll make sure I bring this to his attention. Uh, actually, KFC, when I first saw the KFC, KFC stands for killing, fisting, and cursing our um, Ramadan slogan, Islamic Ramadan slogan. Kill, killing, curse, uh, fisting, and cursing. Joining the Ramadan, more killings takes place under the name of Islam uh, lots of food are eaten under the feast and there is a huge cursing of non-Muslims joining the Ramadan but now we got like shop what kind of shop is that like AFC, uh, AFC. it's a uh, takeaway takeaway shops are now advertising Islam that means don't ever go there from now on Oh, sister, can you get me a job with your friend? It sounds like a great job. Yeah, he's he's a taster for KFC. He just, like, when you go to his place, he's got all those, like, lots of not edible foods. Like, mm. he thinks they are lovely, but, like, you just look at the fridge and, oh, yeah, just, like, too much. So he brings, like, lots of things as he tastes them. He brings them. And then Sounds amazing. It's them. Sounds um, great, sister. Not sure, sister. Not sure, but yeah, that's what it does. <laughs> um, okay, let me move to the next command. Okay. We are number ten. Oh, again, another Mr. Abbas. That verse means that those boys are not humans. Oh. It's about the non-eating boys. Yeah. They are different beings. That is why they don't believe. Hmm. <laughs> you see why he makes people leave Islam? Why, why would they bleed in the first place if they were human? They are serving. Oh, yeah, so like normal boys why would they believe after they are serving something unless they are like mm -hmm. in mecca dancing clubs or in muslim majority countries where they go to sahara and then you got these dancings and then things takes place just over there behind the curtain um but in this occasion while quran identifies them young boys Abba says oh those boys are not humans Mm. I wonder if they're made of plastic. That's why they don't bleed, no matter what you do to them. 
So he's saying if they were, he's implying that if if they were human, they would bleed. What would make them bleed, Abbas? Yeah. Whatever, uh, whatever, whatever depraved activity would make them bleed under normal circumstances, if they weren't created that way. Hmm? I would love to. I can give the descriptions, but I'm not gonna do that because it it will go under the, my shameless face. Um, disgusting things are involved in that. Very much disgusting things are involved in that. Yeah, I got into a habit of uh, taking screenshots of um, Muslim um, comments like this that actually confirm the disgustingness of this religion. Uh, for the sake of uh, Muslims who might become ex-Muslims when they have their brothers and sisters confirm this. So uh, get into the habit. I say to everyone, get into the habit of taking screenshots of Muslim missionaries' statements that incriminate their religion because we can use it for the Lord. And think very practical side of it. What would make young boys to bleed? What kind of activity... I call it, I don't know what would you call, what, what kind of things needs to be done to them so that they bleed? Yeah, I don't think, like we said before, sister, they don't realize how this sounds. They don't realize that they're confirming that this is depraved. They think they're defending, but they don't wait to think. They're actually confirming our point. Yeah, we know they don't bleed, but why don't they? Because Allah made them in such a way that no matter how much they're abused in that way, they don't get affected the way normal human boys get affected. That's disgusting. And it is identified as serving. They think, oh, that's something serving. That is not serving. That is abuse, child abuse in Islamic paradise for eternity. Not, not, not good people. Really not good. You've got to do something about it to fix it. Really not good. That's not fixing it. That made it worse. Allah can do something to fix it. Someone needs to do something to fix it. The way they can fix it is get rid of the ideology once for all. Seriously, it is like very disgusting and dangerous. Yeah. You wouldn't want your child to be serving that thing, whatever. They label it as a service. Yeah. Just terrible. And then call those service people pearls. Terrible. Okay, next comment was picked up by Daughter of Christ is give her, I think it means like emotional support by marrying another wife to help her cleaning. Give her emotional support by marrying another wife to help her cleaning. I think that's uh, Surah 3, Surah, sorry, Surah 434. Uh, when we're talking about the translation. Um, and here, this is one of the interpretation of that. How to give your wife emotional support in Islam. Marry another wife to help her with the cleaning. Yeah, you can ma actually marry four. One can clean, one can look after the kids, one can cook, one can do the shopping. And the man can just sit there like a king while all these women are serving. What do you think, sister? Uh most of most of Muslim women in Islamic marriage is pretty much fed up with all happening from husband and therefore they are quite happy with the idea of getting the second wife getting the third wife getting the fourth wife why because yes they are getting help in the sexual meeting up the sexual desires of their husband as well as they are getting help with cleaning cooking and all doing all that house duties therefore lots of muslim women is actually like once once they have like second and third wife because it is practical 
was so that's terrible. If if married life is that bad, they shouldn't have got married. But in here, married life is not like their understanding of marriage is very much different. Not about sharing life, but just woman's job is to meet up the desires of husband. Remember, if you don't, if you, if your husband goes to bed angry because you choose to not sleep with him or you've got headache or something, then heavenly beings are going to come and curse you. Uh, lots of pressure on the woman, but I, the, the way kind of mindset goes is if there are a couple of more wives who are, we are doing the job sharing as we do the job sharing, then I won't be that much like slave. I will be just a little bit, I will have some space for myself instead of being full-time slave. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So they want the other women to share the misery, Lord. basically. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't <laughs> call it misery, but like, yeah, that's what is happening. What is happening? Like, I remember that was like lady was saying, yeah, like I need help um, in the house or those kind of things. Therefore, yeah, it's good for men to... Mm -hmm my husband to get the second wife and do you, I think I did send you there was a news that um, there was a news this guy was like his wife was visiting one of her friends so often and he was getting annoyed and then the way he wanted to fix it he simply went and then married with his wife friend he was oh, his wife's oh. friend so that oh, she doesn't wow. go out that often. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think I did send you that news. It was like on the newspaper or something. I remember that. So he ruined their friendship? No, like, I, I think in his mind is like, okay, my wife is not going to go out that much. And then now she's got, her best friend is helping her out. You have a best friend? No need. No need to keep visiting. I'll bring her here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, if, okay. if you think practically, every time when you go out with your friend, you have to buy coffee, tea, walk, find activities, find conversation topics, all those kind of, lots of planning goes there. Yeah, like, I share is, lots of things with my friends, but I don't, I don't share a husband with them. That's just wrong. Um, and it goes under the sharing. Sharing, <laughs> and too sharing. much, too much sharing. <laughs> too much. Uh, we got C C T D T X. He says division of labor amongst wives is called strategic household management. You can take this class with Shaky Yasser Kadi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But when we yeah. look at the multiple wives in the Bible, we get to see the problem. Not only husband um, have, but also their um, their children, their next generation is having, because it is causing division. But yeah, I'm sure Allah is expert on the field. Let me move to the next comment. Um, next, next comment is from Kim. If Allah is all knowing, why he missed to let Muhammad know he will die and advise him to collect Quran to avoid the holes in the narrative. Uh, it's, I don't think, I think question needed to be phrased is like, it's not only Allah is all-knowing, can Allah see the future? If Allah is able to see the future, why Allah didn't tell Muhammad, oh Muhammad, you know, you are going to lie about, you are going to lie, and then I'm going to cut your aorta, prepare. Best way to prepare is put the Quran together because in 2020, June, one of the best sheikh of Islam and with the Muslim missionary is going to express that there are holes in the narrative. Yeah. Or he could have just said to Muhammad during his lifetime, burn to burn the Qurans that were not true with his authority as prophet, it would have looked a lot less suspicious than when Uthman did, because Uthman didn't have authority for Muhammad to burn all those Qurans. That would be better, sister, I think. What do you think? 
Um, it would be, but Quran appeared after that. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, it, it would have been good if he just collected the Quran and in finished a full it form. Yeah. in a full form in a book. Yeah. Before he died, and he had lots of times. He was prophet for how long? Twenty. Thirty years. Twenty. Twenty-three years. He had plenty of time. Come on, sister. Don't say that he didn't have time. He was so busy from wife to wife. Yeah. Wife to wife. Remember, he didn't even have time to do gusul between one wife as he passed to the other wife. He was busy guy. I just don't yeah. know why people think he's he had lots of time to fix the Quran. Instead of the 13 wives and the hundreds of battles he went on. And six so days. Yeah, when he was in Medina, he was safe enough. He had his state. Didn't need to go and attack other people. Should have just sat there with his companions. Let's put this Quran together. Surah number one, this is how it goes. To surah to the end. And go over it a couple of times. Make sure everything's perfect. We would have had a manuscript from that time, no problems. And everybody would have known what the Quran was. No one needed to break hips of Ibn Masoud or fight amongst themselves on anything. Or oh, another point is, um, so Muslims believe something called predestination. Everything you do is pre-planned, pre-programmed. Okay? Mm. And um, Allah could simply make Yasir Qadi to not verbalize that or make Muslim missionary to not ask such a question. But Allah wanted all to come come to light. Like sin needs to come to light. So we see how serious it is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He could have done a lot of things. Uh, he should have known that there was going to be a Jewish woman who's trying to kill his favorite prophet and told him yeah. before he put it in his mouth. Yep. Lots of things he could have done, actually. But he did warn Muhammad. Muhammad just didn't listen, sister. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, if he doesn't listen, then he's not a perfect prophet. Yeah. Remember, like, he said, like, oh, if you make lies about us, we will cut your elta. And then he continued to do so. He continued to do so. And then, yeah, like a Jewish it. woman. Okay, let's move to the next one. Um, would you like to read this one, sister? Um, Adam is the first Muslim. Oh, oh yes. Um, I don't understand. I need help. Is Adam the first Muslim? If so, why Allah is saying all Muslims could have two, three, or four wives, but Allah created only one woman for him? Help me to understand. And I like the comment underneath, so I, I, I included it too. And, um, and you have to verbalize that then with your red <laughs> veins. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kogito Ego. Allah is the greatest of pimps. <laughs> uh, yeah, Allah is the greatest of everything. So, yeah, so, yeah, Muslims say that Adam is the first Muslim. That's true, sister. But he only had one option. Why is that? So are we upset that even in Islamic tradition, Allah did not create, even in Islamic tradition, Allah did not create baby Eve for Adam. Are we upset that even in Islamic tradition, Allah did not create child Eve for Adam? Are we upset even in Islamic tradition, Adam had, in the creation story, had only one wife? Is that what we are upset about? Yeah. So Allah made Adam very bad, very, very, very bad Muslim. It would have made sense if he had more than one wife because then he could populate the earth quicker. If God was ha if God was okay with more than one no. woman for a man, sister, it would have sister. been more efficient. No, in the time of Adam, okay, in the time of Adam, um, there were only there weren't that much work in the house. Adam mm -hmm. was like Adam would be able to deal with all the housework, all those sexual desire stuff with one wife. 
but the, when it come to time of Muhammad, Muhammad, there was something inside of Muhammad full of lust. So therefore, therefore Muhammad needed like extra wives. And then Muslims who comes after Muhammad, it's the same. They needed extra wives to deal with their things. It is Adam and Eve, but Muhammad versus Aisha is. JV says Allah couldn't find enough spare ribs. Oh, and um, someone else is saying they were too big, not enough land for crops. Oh, because remember you they, mean, were, like they were how, 90, feet, 90 feet or something? They were 90 feet tall, so yeah. too many. <laughs> I don't know. But then their children were also 90 feet tall. So that doesn't make sense. Um, I guess the bottom line is, sadly, I think we might need to agree on this. Even in the story, creation story, it seems Islamic it's creation story of Islam. It seems that Allah's intention was to make one husband and one wife for one another. Hmm. Not Adam versus child, Eve, baby Eve, or Eve's, but Adam and Eve. But by the time we get to meet with perfect example to humanity, man, things are changing. Allah's original plan messed up, it seems to me. So if any Muslims are listening, the point we're trying to make is it was always God's plan that it's one man and one woman. It's According against his Bible. will. It's against his will and plan for men to have more than one wife. Isn't that right, sister? According to Bible, yeah. According to Bible. And this part that Muhammad plagiarized from the Bible, there was only Adam and Eve. This is true. And that's the reason. Otherwise, if God was happy with more than one wife, he would have created more than one for Adam, but he didn't. Okay. Okay, let me move to the next one. The vowels and dots were edited for jahils like you. Someone is calling us jahils? Uneducated? Uh, jahils, yeah, ignorant, I think the word means. Yeah, uneducated, so ignorant, yeah. Ignorant, yeah. Um, so that's from a Muslim? <laughs> that's a okay. compliment. That's a compliment because that is for all of the Muslims who decided to put the Ed, start ed, ed, editing the dots from late 7th century, beginning 8th century, and then it took its full form by God knows 10th century. Yep, for all <laughs> Muslims, Jahils. Um, I think he thought that he was insulting us, non Muslims, but actually he's insulting Muslims because yeah. the vowels and the dots were added for all Muslims, Muslims <laughs> so, who are not Arabs. Yeah, so Muslims in um, different parts of the world they would not be able to put together what was happening. Even today, in uh, vowels are do dots, do dots are changing the meaning of lots of things. I think for the continental, it was needed because Arabic was still forming, like Arabic was like just in beginning stage. Um, but vowels um, today, even for like, I think we simply can say like, everyone in Muslim majority countries would go under the, this category or with this criteria identified as jahils because they need dots to read, right? Makes sense. No, even Arabs, 100% of Arabs need dots to read. Yeah. Um, no one reads in the, you know, 7th century, whatever, early undotted version. Um, and actually, if he's calling people jahils for not reading, uh, able to read Arabic without the dots, that's 100% of Muslims today. But other thing is like, think about it, sister. Mm -hmm. he's, to he's saying, oh, those are the vo vowels and dots are edited for you people. Well, Muhammad couldn't even get to that stage. He couldn't even put the letters together. What does yeah, if I was about his prophet? If I was Muslim, I wouldn't call anyone Jahil because you follow a prophet who couldn't read even with the with or without dots. 
you give him a book, he'll just look at it and not know what to do with it. Even when the angel told him to read, mm. he couldn't. So uh, if I was Muslim, I wouldn't be calling anyone jahil. You follow an illiterate man. Look, he's, he's one of the, I think, nice comment of the tonight. I think this needs a lot of credit. Allah been reading the Quran last night. Today he is ex-Muslim. <laughs> And yeah. that would be the same for Muhammad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think if Muhammad could read what's on, uh, what Jibril gave him in the cave, he would be ex-Muslim too. That's why he he did, couldn't read. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, let's move, let's move, let's move. What was this number? That was number 14. Let's move to number 15. We might need to stop very soon, I think. Okay, this is... Oh, do you want to read this, sister? Yeah, so this is a sad story from a Muslim uh, that I... Ex-Muslim now, that I saw. Uh, <clears throat> says, take it from me, I got abused and manipulated every day from Quran reading. For three years, till I begged my dad to stop putting me there because I had a feeling he's going to kill me. Tortured me and my sister and I suffer from trauma, but thankfully was healed. we healed. But I remember that sentence he said to me that makes me feel sick to my stomach. Be thankful I'm hurting you. Allah could have done way worse. Please stop this religion. Your thoughts? Um... Yes, this is the dark satanic side of Islam, of living every day with Islam, especially if you're young and you're forced to um, learn the Quran in madrasas, you know, usually mosques, people are beaten. You know, imagine trying to learn a text that's not your language. It's very, very hard. Um, people are beaten into it, forced into it, intimidated into learning it. Um, and um, this is actually quite a common experience. You're forced to go there every day if you're a child um, after school. If you live in Western countries, in um, Islamic countries, it's a given. You know, everyone learns to read Tajweed in that way, the Quran. A lot of abuses happen. This is one of the um, examples. And I it shows the spirit of that religion is a spirit of fear, torture, intimidation subjugation even to its own idea is one once your teacher is beating you or hanging you from your feet from the balcony of the mosque or those kind of things uh, that makes you to freaked out makes you to be so afraid and you learn it much much quicker and it does work fear mm. does work but once people know there is a freedom once people, yeah, there is an alternative. People run for that alternative. But yes, um, yeah, it's very bad. Like what happens uh, in the mosques, what happens in the mosques are not that. If you're terrified you go, at that age. Sorry. If, you, if you're terrified from the imam or from the religious le um, uh, uh, leaders at that age, or terrified from the religion at that age, it scars you so much that you can't question it. It, be it becomes like a place in your mind where you can't go. And I think this is why it's so hard for Isla Muslims to question Islam, because it's like, no, 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 I can't, I can't. It's too untouchable, it's too scary because of that abuse in childhood. And it takes a lot of, um, I think, healing, prayer, uh, courage for Muslims to even go there in their mind because it's if that happens to you from when you're very little it scars you. you you're not like a normal person who can look at things objectively uh, you can look at lots of things objectively but the moment when it comes to Islam no yeah. because you remember the torture you've been through when you were at mosque or at school and did you see what he said to her you think you think this is bad? You know, be thankful. Allah could have done worse. Yeah. So, yeah, they 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 get scared. They scare them with this invisible Allah that will do worse to you. He will do worse to you. So when you grow up, you think I can't, I can't think, I can't question, I can't even go there in my mind that this might be wrong because what will Allah do to me? 
this invisible, what I call boogeyman. Uh, but I tell you, as ex-Muslims, we have stood up to this Allah in our minds and we've rebelled against him, we've left him, we've come to the truth and he hasn't done, he hasn't struck me down, he hasn't done anything, he doesn't exist. He's just someone invisible that they use to scare you. Um, so you've got people in the mosque or in the schools who are torturing you or abusing you or beating you or humiliating you because you have not memorized the surah, you have not kind of doing it the way it's supposed to be done. And then you go home and then your father asks you, oh, what did you learn? You have to do it. And if you haven't done it, you've got this abused at home as well. And there is like big shame and honor, like what happens in the mosque or at school, all your neighbors knows. And once you like failed in reciting, I don't know, Ayat al-Kursi or something, everyone in your neighborhood knows about it. And you know, when your father gets home, there will be lots of negative things. Therefore, you do your best. You do your better than best to make sure you memorize those verses the way they needed to be done. And that keeps you in the ideology. You're stuck in that ideology because of fear. And as I said, once, once you see, oh yeah, there are people who don't, who don't live with that fear. Let me invest in that. Let me check that out. And then you want to run away from that ideology when that happens. Yes, amen. Um, how far, how are we doing? We've, we've been live for one hour, 46 minutes, 59 seconds. It's up to you, sister, how far you want to go? Um, we've done how long 15, do you want to go? We've done 15 and we've got, um, Ten more comments. Um, what we can do is we can take some comments in this live stream if there are or if there is any question we can take them. And then uh, and then we deal with a couple of them and then we kind of I think pick up again where we left with the comments. We can have like comedy and tragedy part two. <laughs> what do yeah, you think? We've, yeah, I think so. Uh, there was a comment from earlier about um, black people and Islam. Truth makes you free says they are deceived. My best friend is black and is now educated and told other black people. And I think okay. it's about Islam. Okay, give me a second. I downloaded I didn't. I saw that uh, my sky was um, jumping yes. around but i didn't download that let me see if i can download that one it should be true sets you free but anyway i'm not if that's the name you want to <laughs> choose fine but truth sets you free um, yes, sister, it, um, comment is on the screen. Yeah, um, he's talking about uh, black people. We talked about how they uh, go into Islam thinking it's good for black people. He said they were deceived. My best friend is black and is now educated and told other black people. Very good. That's what we need, education for everyone. And once people are educated, they will leave Islam and tell others so they're not deceived. Uh, Muslims in the West, especially for people who they know they care about their race, their rights for black people, they, they sell Islam to them as it's great for black people. Stick it to the white man, you know, come join Islam. And for people who are feminists, they say, yeah, Islam is feminist. Islam is everything to everyone. And they didn't, you know, even though the sources say differently for all these groups. What do you think? Sis? Yeah. Um human heart is bad people do lots of crazy things when it comes to racism or color code of individuals 
or they even introduce something color code, but Muhammad and Islam steps into the world and enables people with their color code. And lots of ugly, lots of ugly teachings on that. It's sad that uh, many people are not aware of that because in people's mind is Christianity is white people's religion. Therefore, Islam is the alternative to all, but teaching is not very good at all. Teaching is very dangerous. The language Islam teaches to be used against people is disturbing. Uh, We got Ahmed David saying, what's the point of this channel? To preach Christianity or create lies of a perfect religion? Perfect religion? <laughs> oh, is he talking about my nail polish? My nail polish is perfect. I don't know any other something called perfect religion. I know perfect God, man, Lord Jesus Christ. I know perfect God, but I don't know such a thing called perfect religion. And I am double confident that is not islam at all because i don't know if people can see the comment was put together by chris poison killed muhammad internet kills islam i am dead serious <laughs> yep yeah internet is killing islam make no mistake and chris is like dead serious about it <laughs> yeah i agree with chris it's only a matter of time and um, ahmed david's so just uh, Go back to your Muslim brother's comment about uh, what's low level about is uh, Muhammad, uh, and you'll get all the perfect examples from his life. So what is, um, can I just f um, hear from the person, what is so perfect about this perfect Islam? Yeah, uh, can you write it in the give chat? Us, just... Give us top 10. Yeah, give us top 10. Perfection perfections from the life of Muhammad top 10 top 10 yeah tell me how you know let's see if it's the answer is going to come from Mecca or from Saudi Arabia yeah he's doing the slogans sister what I call slogans Islam is perfect that's what they teach you they can't give any examples oh okay um i've never read any more censored about islam than what you guys speak here you're all so censored brainwashed it breaks my heart why is why is your comment so full of um swear words if you're religion if you follow a perfect religion you should speak perfectly why uh, is your comment so full of swear words ahmed davids you follow a perfect man you should be near perfect <laughs> if not perfect and where are your examples for the perfect religion it is sad that he didn't even bother to read islamic sources he first time hears here mm. that is disappointing that as a muslim you 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 identified your religion to be perfect but you didn't even bother to check your own sources so give us top 10 list for the perfect ideology he's top saying yeah i got featured he's happy he got featured on the channel that crashes your <laughs> destroys your religion and your prophet well well done well that makes you an apostate <laughs> for that you got featured well done where's your answer for the 10 top perfect things in islam please Perfect things about Islam. Islam is so perfect, allows husband to beat the wife. Islam is so perfect, allows husband to force himself to wife. Islam is so perfect if wife says, Habibi, I cannot sleep with you tonight, I've got headache. Heavenly being steps in and then curse the wife until morning. Not only for one second, but until morning. Islam is so perfect, if you are not covered, you are abused. Islam is so perfect, calls Christian Jews as the worst of creatures. Islam is so perfect, um, calls humiliation of the people of the book. Islam is so perfect, 
caused the crit critic of Muhammad to be killed. Islam is so perfect, um, allowed child marriage and child divorce. Islam is so perfect, allowed, <laughs> allowed prostitution. Islam is so perfect, allowed married men to prostitute. Islam is so perfect, allowed wife to go and sell herself or her Jews so that she can go back to her husband. Islam is so perfect, there is nothing perfect in the life of Allah and Muhammad. Islam is so perfect, we've got zero example. What is the definition of the perfect, according, which meets with the definition of perfect according to Oxford Dictionary? Still nothing from him, sister. Still? Still. Maybe his answers are coming from Sheikh Google. Go to it was Sheikh quick Google. enough. He, he was quick enough to type all this that you're on the screen. Uh, unhappy that he got featured, but nothing more really. Disappeared. Poof. Why do Muslims disappear when we give them a platform to talk about their religion? Where did you get all this? This stuff is from Christianity and West. Ideas. Oh man. I think we've got someone who just like. Born like Where today, is not the even ten yesterday. perfect things? Where not, are the ten perfect things? I think he was just born today, not even yesterday. Therefore, he didn't have a chance to look at the Quran. Those fake Muslims. Fake. Where Muslims. is the ten perfect things, David? Don't you want to do dawah to us? Why can't you cite even one good thing about your religion? And uh, yeah, about us, just listen to your sister in the previous stream, previous couple of streams. She called in saying we made up the breastfeeding adults thing. And the next stream, she came and admitted that it was in Islam after she saw her own sheikhs and Muslim missionaries talking about it. So you'll be well advised not to look silly like she did. Go check it out first, yeah? And bring the 10 top uh, perfect things next time you speak. I don't want to hear slogans again. Bring your evidence. Um, say, I'm waiting top 10 things sister so perfect like I think he's like trying to find the perfect letters in the keyboard to put together per top 10 perfect thing and I'm waiting so we are here tomorrow evening day after day ideally call in on Friday we give you time until Friday call in uh Call in on Friday and then give us your top 10 things about your perfect religion. And oh, he ran away? If you don't call in, we will know you you freaked out because you noticed there is nothing perfect about Islam. He ran away, sister. He ran away from giving us perfect things about Islam. He said, I'll leave you all to do your own research from an Islamic perspective. Child. He, can't, he <laughs> can't even defend his prophet. Let alone, he can't even back up his claims. Heartbreaking, yeah, he can't. heartbreaking, really, really yeah. heartbreaking. I don't I know what it is about Muslims. They keep saying Islam is perfect, but they never sit down and think to myself, why am I saying this? What is so perfect? And so they'll be prepared for when someone asks them. Or once they need to kind of justify for themselves. Or once they are watching their father is beating their mother. Or once they are watching a stranger is breast sucking their mother. Those kind of things. I give you the asking the basic questions. But anyway, um, sister, would you like to just um, summarize um, why you picked up some of the comments you picked up? And then we can follow up this session in coming days. Uh, I picked up comments that I thought were interesting and funny and some of them expose Islam. We heard from a couple of ex-Muslims, which is good fruit. Um, people who have come from Islam to Jesus Christ, the kingdom of light. So that was encouraging. Um, there were good questions about Islam that helped me uh, Muslims think like the Adam question. Uh, also useful questions like how to approach evangelizing Muslims. Um, there. There were a few from our best because he stalks this channel and we pray that as he does so, he leaves Islam, like some of his brothers who have said that he made them leave Islam. So welcome to him all the time. He's making Muslims leave Islam, praise God, and come to Christ. 
Um, so uh, it was just a, I love the comments because we see what's happening from our brothers and sisters and also from um, the Muslim side. So praise God for that. And without any shame, someone decided Aisha was old enough for marriage. That came out with a shameless face. I think worse, worse shame, shameless than me. If that was the case, Aisha would know how to get home. If that was the case, Aisha would know where the babies come from. If that was the case, Aisha wouldn't lose her hair. If that was the case, Aisha would know where to put the doll. If that was the case, Aisha would simply wouldn't fit the ship. If that was the case, there wouldn't be such a thing called child marriage in Islam. Sorry, do your homework. Do your homework. Um, sad that like we live in a century, people are seriously don't do any any reading. Like sad. That's like sad. yeah. It's it's following the illiterate example of your prophet. I know the prophet of Islam is illiterate. Don't have to follow him in that part. You can pick up a book. And let it be a book about your religion, yeah? Pick up Sahih Bukhari, open it up, and see what Aisha says in her own words. I was six when my mother took me off the swing and put me on the lap of Muhammad. I was playing with the dolls. I was playing around with my uh, friends uh, in the house of uh, the Prophet. I was and running around. Yeah, when Prophet comes, all the children are leaving Used because they freaked out that what he does to children. But that's another topic by itself. I think I'm covering that actually on Thursday with Sandra Solomon. Mm. Um, so yes, tune in for that if you don't want to read. Yeah, if you are if lazy you to read your sources, <laughs> tune in on Thursday. Someone will be reading your sources for you. Yeah. And um, anyway, um, Dot of Christ, thank you very much for picking up those comments. And... Um, it was good to kind of see what people are writing and going through. It will be, um, we will pick up again. I guess sometimes it's good to give some attention to those of you who are in the chat, so you don't your feelings doesn't get hurt because Hatun doesn't give you any compliment or doesn't bring your comments to any attention. Um, tomorrow evening, uh, we are going to talk about racism and discrimination um on the live stream on thursday we got sandra solomon on saturday we got zakaria potros and of course all these things will happen by the grace of god if we are still breathing out and breathing in that's our plan if lord has different plan then that will uh, we will have to follow his plan uh, dear muslims who those of you who deny Islam and who are ashamed of your prophet, as well as those Muslims who are passionately trying to defend uh, your prophet, thank you very much for joining us. And dear beloved ones, uh, thank you for spending for another evening with us. May our crucified and risen Lord silent you with his love. Daughter of Christ, thank you very much for joining me. God bless you, sister.